What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome to the Keep It Techie channel. And today I wanted to explore an incredible tool that's a game changer for anyone interested in website intelligence and security. And this tool is called WebCheck. This open source tool provides exhaustive insight into any website's infrastructure and security posture, all without the hassle of signups, trackings, or ads. So let's uncover this tool that can revolutionize the way you understand and secure your online presence. Before we move forward, I want to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, so quick backstory. I was searching through GitHub and I ran across this tool called WebCheck. And I thought it was super cool and I thought this would be interesting to showcase on the channel. Now, unlike many other services, WebCheck is a robust open source tool offering a comprehensive look at a website's backbone. And it's super cool if you go here and they have an example set up that you can go in and you can check out websites using a tool and it'll pull in a whole bunch of information based on the website. And basically with just a few clicks, you know, you can uncover a whole bunch of information about any site's infrastructure, security settings, and even its carbon footprint. Now imagine having the ability to scrutinize SSL chains, DNS records, server location, and much more all in one place. And one thing I found that was super cool, you can get it installed on Docker. They have a Docker image for you. And this tool is pretty much advertised to cybersecurity professionals. So whether you're conducting like a OSINT investigation or beefing up your site security for an organization that you work for, or you simply satisfying your tech curiosity, then WebCheck equips you with the insights needed for an in-depth analysis. And the best way is entirely free and open source. So before we get to the install, let me scroll down a little bit, just show you guys the different options on how to deploy it. But you can actually, let me let me give you an example. And this will be the exact example that we'll see once we get up, get it set up in Docker. But if you click on this link right here, this is basically the example. So webcheck-check, web-check.xyz. And if you go to the page, you'll see it right here. So basically all you gotta do is enter your domain name that you wanna check. And this is all the information that it'll look for. And actually, let me go back to the page because it breaks everything down up in here. So here's a screenshot. This kind of shows you the base level information that you'll see when you actually run a check. And then let's scroll down a little more. And this breaks down all the core features or all the data that you'll see when you run it against a domain. So IP information, SSL chain, DNS records, cookies, crawl rules, headers, quality metrics, server location, associated host, redirect chain, text records, server status. And basically I won't go through everything, but it's a whole bunch of information. I'm sure this is useful for a lot of cybersecurity professionals to actually get this set up locally, you know, in a Docker image and you can run it just like this and pull all this information there, like malware phishing detection, block detection, you know, so much information. If you're just trying to do some research on a domain and the website that it pulls up. Now they also have an example of deploying it so you can deploy it using netlify i've never used netlify but versail meaning i never used that as well but they also have a docker image so you got your your way of actually downloading it and getting it set up for docker so super simple and then here's a little bit more the configuration so you got google api keys shodan api keys who api key as well as some more configuration settings so it just 
breaks out how to set everything up for yourself uh, when you get it installed on your system. And there's also a way to set up a development environment if you want to, it uses Yarn. So you need that dependency and you can store the development server and you can assist with the development of this application. And you'll need Node.js installed as well as Yarn, as well as Git. And also down here at the bottom, you, it just talks about the community. You can contribute and I also have a guide if you want to contribute, basically, you know, how to use GitHub as well as Git docs, reporting bugs and supporting. And they have a good amount of people contributing to this. And just to point out the person that actually created it, let's go back up here to the top, is actually Alicia Sykes. And she is on LinkedIn. So I recommend you give her a follow, you know, also store this project. You know, if you can contribute, try to contribute to it, you know, try to help out with it because it's an awesome, you know, little application. So let's go down and hop over to my virtual machine so I can get this Docker image installed and we can get this thing set up. Let's get to it. All right. So I'm logged into my virtual machine and this is my main Docker system. I figured I'd just use this one. Uh, I already have some Docker images running on here. And since it's already set up, configured and all that stuff, I figured I'd just use it for this example. Now, one of the first things I forgot to show you guys was if we hop back over to the website and let's scroll down to how to deploy it. And they basically tell you the Docker image and let's go down and open it up on Docker Hub because that's what we'll use. I'll just click here. That'll open up Docker Hub for us. And then we can find the actual command, you know, the overview, pretty much any and everything you need for this thing to get it set up. And so let's go down and we can copy this command. And that's what I recommend people start doing. Going into Docker Hub, you can search easily from the website. It's a whole lot easier to do that. And as you can see, it was updated 12 hours ago. It's basically an OSINT tool for Android analyzing any website and you can also get stats on it you know it was pulled like over a hundred thousand times so it's a very popular application so let's go on and copy this right fast because that's how we need to run in order to pull the image down and then we create a docker image after this so let's switch back over to my terminal right fast and paste in our command and go down and press enter and that'll pull down our docker image and it doesn't take too long to actually do this. And we could have searched, you know, for the Docker image from our terminal. I just figured it would be an easier way to show you guys how to get the image, you know, name and all that stuff just by going to Docker Hub. And so let's get this a second to finish and I'll be right back. And that's pretty much it. We got our image and I did a video recently showing you guys a lot of Docker commands. So if you want to refer back to that in order to, you know, run some of these commands that I'm going to run, like for instance, Docker image that will show us the images that we have downloaded. I just wanted to show you guys, but yeah, there you go. Web check. You'll see it right there. It's already downloaded and I'm running like a couple other images on here, like Homer pertainer dash CE. That's all running on here. And the only reason I wanted to show the image file because it's pretty big. So it's 1.68 gigabytes. Okay, so now that we got our image downloaded, let's go down and create our container. And let's hop back over to the website so we can grab the command. And so let's copy it right fast and let's hop back over to the terminal and paste that command in there. And what this is saying, Docker run, and then we wanna use specific ports for the actual web checker and then our image name. So that's essentially how you run this command. So, or what everything means. So let's go down and press enter and then we'll go down and start up our server. Now, one thing about it, like you don't wanna run it like this if you run it on a server, cause you're gonna need, need to use your terminal. And if you kill this, this will kill the Docker image. And so I'm gonna show you guys how to run it a little bit different once we just verify that it's, that it's actually working. So I'm gonna grab this URL. All we had to do is go to localhost or the IP address of this server and I already know what it is it's nine so let's grab that right fast and then head back over to our web browser open up another tab i'm gonna paste that in there it's gonna not go but I, that's only because i don't have the ip address typed in there so it said localhost and this server is on my network it has an ip address a static ip address and i already kind of know what it is and it might not work either yeah there we go so it's working there we go. Cause I was thinking it might not work because I don't have these ports open on my server. I don't think, or maybe I just don't have a firewall on, but port 3000 is available. And so we got it basically set up. But if you go back over to the terminal, like I stated, you still need to use the terminal, right? So let me show you guys how to run it a different way by adding a couple more commands. They don't give you those like on the website. They didn't give us 
like how to actually run it without you know having the terminal open the whole time but i'm gonna show you guys how to do it right fast so let's switch back over to the terminal and it's just adding a couple more options to our terminal let's see if we can get out of this thing oh man i forgot you gotta hit control d i believe and that will kill the docker container or maybe not. All right, so the only way I can, let's see, fix this is, let's open up another tab so you guys can see, but let's connect to the server. And I know you guys wanna see this, but let's go SSH 192.168.10.9, log back into it. And I'm gonna bring everything up to the top so you guys can see, cause right now when I'm running tabs, it takes away some of the space that you guys can see. But what you can do is let's go Docker PS, and this will list running Docker containers. And what we wanna do is stop this container right here. So this is the ID for it. And we can type Docker stop and actually, and then that ID, let's go and paste that in there. And that should kill our Docker image, cool. And then we switch back over here and you'll see that it closed out that, that actual image for us. So that's like a little trick to get around you know, certain applications, it'll open up and it won't allow you to exit out of it uh, or it won't even give you an option to, which is cool if you're running it. Let's say you're, you're on, you only need to run this one time, but you still have, should have an option to kill it some kind of way while you're in it if you want to. But let's say you constantly doing OSINT on different websites and you want to keep this thing running all the time. And actually, let's kill our other tab so it'll bring it up to the top. And it looks like my terminal died on me. So let me go back in there right fast. But let's say you want to run a Docker container all the time because you're constantly doing like OSINT, you know, or research on different domains. Well, let me show you guys something right fast. So instead of just Docker run dash P, one of the first things I always like to put in is dash D for detached. So that's a detached container. So it won't, it'll run, basically open it up in the background on the server that you're running it on. And then typically I name it, I know I said, said this earlier, but I didn't name it, uh, but this is how you name your container. I like to name my containers, especially if it's something I'm gonna keep going. So let's say the Docker container doesn't store it or something, or it stops for whatever reason, and I need to start it up. It's easier just type in a name versus searching for that ID using the Docker PS command. I already know what it is. I could just type it in. So Docker start, you know, web check. So that's the name of it. I'm gonna just make it one word. And another thing I wanna add is restart. I want this thing to restart. So I want it to start when the server reboots for one, and let's say the container stops for whatever reason. Let's say they have some updates to the server and there's a Docker update. And so it stops our images. I want this image to start back up or this container to actually start back up if something happens like that. So let's add this option in there as well. So let's go that restart and then equals, and we need to put the equal sign in there always and space. And then we put our Docker image file at the end of it. And this is the command that you want to run. And I'll probably put this down in the description of the video. So you guys can see everything I typed and you can copy it if you want to, once you get the image downloaded and all that stuff on your system. So let's go down and run this and you'll see that it'll just start the image and it's running in the background and it's running exactly the same as we had it before. It's just, we don't have our terminal terminal locked up. So now let's switch back over to our sites and then we can go back to web check and I'm gonna refresh it cause it, I don't know if it, you know, refreshed on its own, but let's go down and run this thing. Cause that's what I was trying to get to. Once I got it all set up, I was going to run it against something. So let's run it against my website. Let's type H and then ports forward slash forward slash. I actually put S in there. Cause I know it has a cert and then let's go to keep it techie.com and let's press analyze. Boom. And it, it runs, it's running like 37 jobs It two jobs skipped which is fine, but this gives you kind of like an idea of how far it is, it's went along. And as you can see, it ran pretty good, good, and it's running on a Docker image on this system. But anyway, you get a whole bunch of information about the server. You can see the time zone of the server is American Chicago, Central Time, the United States, the city, language, currency, SSL search. All right, and then one cool thing, you got your domain who is, so all the information about 
for your who is your domain itself so just keep it take it .com, you know all that good stuff dealing with it the encryption information i kind of skipped over this but keep it techy is using less encrypt i encrypted myself i had an automatic set up on the server dns records it even points out my ip address of the server that's my a record which is fine and it even shows the operating system that's running on the server so i'm using apache on ubuntu and actually i probably need to update this thing i'll update it before i put this video out but i just want to show you guys a lot of the information that you can see you know it's super cool http security so don't worry about that security.txt not present none of that information is there but social media tags it pulls in that information dns server so it's a google server so i'm actually running this in a virtual machine in the cloud using gcp also super cool trace route and so that's super cool right there you know what i'm saying you can see a full trace route firewall no firewall and so a lot of this information you can you know use you know, if you're trying to figure out information or you want to gather information for a server, which is super cool. And they also can kind of, you know, help you with, let's see, checking to see if there's any vulnerabilities in the server or vulnerabilities on the website, you know, all that good stuff. And then we can go back to the home page and we can run it against something else. I know I got another, let's see, domain. I think it's kitpro.us, I believe that's one. Same, you know, kind of information you'll, you'll probably see for that one. But this domain, I don't know what I have it tied to, but it's, it might be forwarding to something else. I don't know. But yeah, it's pointing up to that same server. I'm not 100% sure what's on that domain. I had to look at it a little later. But that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this comprehensive guide to utilizing web check to enhance your understanding and security of any website. And I hope this tutorial empowers you to explore the intricate details of websites and utilize this knowledge in your tech endeavors. And remember, the tech field is vast and full of opportunities to learn and grow. So keep exploring, stay curious, and continue to push the boundaries of your tech knowledge. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the keep it tech channel for more tech insights tutorials and tips until next time keep it tech